Bernheim's Experiments. Hippolyte Bernheim, Professor of Medicine at Nancy, France, 1910. 1919, was the expounder of the fact that the suggestion of the physician to the patient was exerted through the subconscious mind. Bernheim, in his Suggestive Therapeutics, page 197, tells a story of a man with paralysis of the tongue which had yielded to no form of treatment. His doctor told the patient that he had a new instrument with which he promised to heal him. He introduced a pocket thermometer into the patient's mouth. The patient imagined it to be the instrument, which was to save him. In a few moments he cried out joyfully that he could once more move his tongue freely. Among our cases, continues Bernheim, facts of the same sort will be found. A young girl came into my office, having suffered from complete loss of speech for nearly four weeks. After making sure of the diagnosis, I told my students that loss of speech sometimes yielded instantly to electricity, which might act simply by its suggestive influence. I sent for the induction apparatus. I applied my hand over the larynx and moved a little, and said, now you can speak. speak distinctly, the loss of voice had disappeared. Here Bernheim is showing the power of faith and expectancy on the part of the patient, which acts as a powerful suggestion to the subconscious mind, producing a blister by suggestion. Bernheim states that he produced a blister on the back of a patient's neck by applying a postage stamp and suggesting to the patient that it was a fly plaster. This has been confirmed by the experiments and experiences of many doctors in many parts of the world, which leave no doubt that structural change are a possible result of oral suggestion to patients. 59. The Cause of Bloody Stigmata In Hudson's Law of Psychic Phenomena, page 153, he states, Hemorrhages and bloody stigmata may be induced in certain subjects by means of suggestion. Dr. M. Buddha put the subject into the somnambulistic condition and gave him the following suggestion, at 4 o'clock this afternoon, after the hypnosis, you will come into my office, sit down in the armchair, cross your arms upon your breast, and your nose will begin to bleed. At the hour appointed the young man did as directed. Several drops of blood came from the left nostril. On another occasion the same investigator traced the patients both his forearms with the dull point of an instrument. Then, when the patient was in this anambulistic condition, he said, at 4 o'clock this afternoon you will go to sleep, and your arms will lead along the lines which I have traced, and your name will appear, written in your arms in letters of blood. He was watched at 4 o'clock and seemed to fall asleep. On the left arm the letters stood out in brightly. In several places there were drops of blood. The letters were still visible three months afterward, although they had gradually grown faint. These facts demonstrate at once the correctness of the two fundamental propositions previously stated, namely, the constant amenability of the subconscious mind to the power of suggestion and the perfect control, which the subconscious mind exercises, over the functions, sensations, and conditions of the body. All the foregoing phenomena dramatize vividly abnormal conditions induced by suggestion, and are conclusive proof that as a man thinketh in his heart, subconscious mind, so is he. Healing Points in Review 1. Remind yourself frequently that the healing power is in your own subconscious mind. 60. 2. Know that faith is like a seed planted in the ground, it grows after its kind. Plant the idea, seed, in your mind, water and fertilize it with expectancy, and it will manifest. 3. The idea you have for a book, new invention, or play is real in your mind. This is why you can believe you have it now. Believe in the reality of your idea, plan, or invention, and as you do, it will become manifest. 4. In praying for another, know that your silent inner knowing of wholeness, beauty, and perfection can change the negative patterns of 
the other subconscious mind and bring about wonderful results. 5. The miraculous healings you hear about at various shrines are due to imagination and blind faith which act on the subconscious mind, releasing the healing power. 6. All disease originates in the mind. Nothing appears on the body unless there is a mental pattern corresponding to it. 7. The symptoms of almost any disease can be induced anew by hypnotic suggestion. This shows you the power of your thought. 8. There is only one process of healing and that is faith. There is only one healing power, namely, your subconscious mind. 9. Whether the object of your faith is real or false, you will get results. Your subconscious mind responds to the thought in your mind. Look upon faith as a thought in your mind, and that will suffice.